Nailed it, Elliot. Hi, I'm Ann Driscoll, and I'm the president of Launchpad, and I'm delighted to be here tonight and this afternoon on the Growth Summit stage. Today, we're going to be talking about, with three uh, true legends, actually, who have been the architects of creating content related and communication technology and platforms. And we're going to talk about how you can incorporate authentic communication into your overall growth strategy. Let's get started. Joining me today, Ron Palmieri, the CEO of Layer. Stand up. Oh, because I'm doing my two minute thing. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm Ron Palmieri, CEO of Layer. Um, Layer powers conversational um, business. And basically what that means is mobile's really changed the way we all expect to communicate with each other. Many of you hopefully are using the uh, Collision app. Layer's actually powering the conversation experience there. So all of you are already Layer users. Um, but our, our core business is really focusing on enterprise customers um, that build conversation experiences from the point of initial engagement. So think of it as this new emerging category of conversational marketing to um, uh, conversion or sales. So basically... Um, turning uh, co those conversations into customers, and then ultimately providing support in a highly contextualized way. So if you think about the end-to-end -end customer journey, the customer relationship really lives within the conversation um, that businesses have really been having for uh, pretty much the beginning of businesses. But now that's becoming more and more digital. So there's really interesting byproducts that come from these real-time uh, conversations. One is they're much more highly engaging. Our, uh, our, one of our customers, Red Ventures, um, it, it's a little bit of a, the, the name is a little bit of a misnomer. They're actually a digital marketing uh, firm, and they help businesses like uh, DirecTV and American Express credit cards um, turn uh, website traffic that they drive with um, advertising into uh, signups. And it's been interesting because they've been able to move away from traditionally call center type inter, uh, sales into conversational um, uh, discussions that turn into customers. Um, we also have one of our longest standing customers is uh, Trunk Club by uh, Nordstrom. Um, when we first started working with them, they connected through email on the phone. By moving that into a conversation, they were able to increase engagement over 300%, reduce cost of sales from 21% uh, to 6%, and ultimately drive um, literally tens of millions of dollars in, in, uh, in profitability. So I uh, look forward to being here to talk about how um, business conversations are being uh, transformed. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, Ron. And next up, we've got Michael Mignano at Anchor. And he's helping us make podcasting easy for everyone. Hey, everyone. I'm Michael Mignano from Anchor. Uh, we make podcasting really easy for everyone. Uh, how, how many of you have ever tried to make a podcast? Show of hands. So a handful of you. You probably know it's really, really hard. It's really hard to do. You need an expensive microphone. You need to understand confusing software. You have to pay to host your files. You have to distribute using RSS. Uh, with Anchor, we give you everything you could need to make a great podcast all in one place, and it's completely free. So... We give you tools to record. We give you tools to connect with your friends remotely and have conversations live. We give you really great, high-quality music and transitions. Uh, we give you, like I said, everything you need. We host the content completely free. And then with the tap of a button, we let you push it out uh, effortlessly to Apple Podcasts, Google Play, basically everywhere podcasts are heard. We started the company because I, like many of you, had tried to start a podcast, and I found it to be incredibly difficult and frustrating. And uh, we just figured, hey, we have these phones in our pockets that have really high-quality microphones. They're connected to the Internet. Why is it this hard to start a podcast? So, uh, so that's what we did, and that's what Anchor does. Uh, we, we're seeing amazing content being created from all over the world, uh, everything to, from gaming podcasts to sports uh, my, my recent favorite, which I was just telling someone backstage, is actually called Describing a Rock, and it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a person talking about rocks, which I never thought would be interesting, but uh, it's, actually, it's actually very relaxing and soothing. So anyway, if you've ever thought about making a podcast, uh, definitely hope that you'll check out Anchor, and uh, excited to talk with you all today. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. And now we've got Thomas Wallace, the C CEO of Unicast.
Hey guys, I'm Thomas Waller. I'm the CEO and the co-founder of Unicast, a location data company. And have a look at this uh, quote on the slide. This is a quote by SoftBank, one of the largest venture funds in the world. It says that location data is going to be mission critical to the development of the world's most exciting technologies. So you can ask, why is that? Well, if you look at this, 70% of what we do in our awake time is in the real world. Out here, at conferences, restaurants, bars, travel, etc. But no one has yet captured in a detailed view what we do in the physical world. But now there are sensors, there's GPS data that allows the collection of these very interesting data sets. The challenge is that no one has done this yet. And this is what Unicast is doing. We're building the real world graph. Well, that means that we have built the ecosystem of tons of data sources. We collect GPS data, Wi-Fi data, beacon data, telco data, transaction data. So we can very much understand what are people doing when they are awake and not in front of their screens. What kind of stores do they go to? Where do they travel? Where do they live? And where do they work? And then we have an engine that can collect and aggregate and understand these fragmented signals so we can allow other companies in multiple industries to use this data to make better products. As an example, a lot of our clients are in the advertising space. So now they can advertise to people that have been to certain stores. We have real estate companies. They're opening up a new store. Should they put that on the corner on 5th and 33rd or down in Soho in New York? We can help them with that by looking at our, our data. Hedge funds, equally the same, looking for food traffic patterns. How many people went into McDonald's the last quarter versus the previous one? And based on that, they can bet or short on the stock exchange. So we try to understand human mobility. How do we move around in the physical world to the most detailed level? A bit of us, uh, we've been the number one in the space the last three years. We have a 20% month over month growth in revenue. Uh, we actually collect data on 25% of the US population on a daily basis, all anonymized, all privacy friendly. We sit on data on 3 million commercial venues in the US. And we capture an insane amount of data that we try to make sense of and sell and ship to our clients. So what we believe in is that in order for tomorrow's companies to build great products and make the right decisions, they need quality, transparent location data. Thanks a lot. Join us on the hot seat. Thank you. All right, <laughs> let's get down to it. So, uh, gentlemen, I think you have the data and the platforms that are making it easier than ever to communicate with our customers. How, now that you've done all the hard work of making it easy, what suggestions do you have for startups and companies on their way up to really make it more effective and to do it not just easy, but well? Do you want to take a crack at that, Anchor? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, so what, what we like to say to people, I, I had heard kind of for a while when I was starting Anchor, uh, that, great, you make the tools easy, but I, I, don't, I don't know what to say in a podcast. I don't have anything to say. And my response has typically been, well, everyone knows how to talk, right? Like, we're talking right now. All of you have been talking to each other all day. Uh, it's actually very easy and natural to talk. And it's also, it's the way that we were born to communicate. So what, what, I, what I try to tell people is just be authentic and be yourself and actually just just say what you know and talk about what you're passionate about and people will appreciate it and people will respect it. Um, so, I, so I always like to tell people just to be authentic. So I think just Ron setting it up for you, I think that's great when it's in a broadcast format, but what you really represent is this idea of a two-way conversation. How do you enable your teams for companies who have those teams to really do that in an authentic way? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I, I think the interesting part about it is that most companies actually talk at their customers instead of actually talking with their customers. And, um, you know, we, it's been interesting for us because we really see what we do is very complementary to the systems that companies already have in place. So they have marketing systems or sales systems or support systems, but what they don't really do is take a customer-centric view of that. And so it's been interesting if you think about some very successful companies like Salesforce, for instance, those are really tools for sales managers to manage salespeople. And we actually work for very closely with uh, Salesforce. They're an investor in the company, as is Microsoft. But what we really see is, is kind of changing their perspective, one that's more um, pull versus push. And what I mean by that is how do you engage your customer in a conversation when they want to speak to you 
most companies are trying to always bang their customer on the head to get them to pay attention when they want the, when the company wants them to engage. So there's a lot of a lot of more. I mean, the, the interesting point about like authenticity comes into how just human beings communicate with each other. So capturing those ways that we all talk to each other in our in our regular lives and being able to um, that expectation now is to do that with businesses yeah. in an authentic way. Makes sense. And what's interesting is is that with Anchor, you know, it is broadcast, but it's actually not a traditional marketing broadcast. It is sort of a you have to come from within, so it's much more emotional and connection. You're making that regular connection with your customers through your platform. Mm -hmm. And I think, tell us a little bit about how Unicast thinks about that data and those insights to really help inform other yeah. folks in terms of that data. Yeah, to me, I think it's very much about transparency. Uh, and when I mean about transparency, I mean a lot of companies are way too afraid of telling what they have built. And if you take Unicast as a data company, how most data ca companies go to market is saying, this is our proprietary data. We will never ever tell you how we got that data and what we did with that data. That doesn't build trust with the client, right? What you're buying is a black box. And I'm from Norway originally, and we have a very transparent uh, society. Actually, all salaries in Norway are publicly available. So you can look me up and see how much I make and how much I have in the bank. It's not that impressive, so uh, I'm not afraid. But I think this is what a lot of companies do wrong, and not only in the data business, that they are too afraid of telling not their IP, but their methods. I think they have to be way more transparent. I'd love to understand how your podcast service are actually making the podcasts, right? I'd love to more, more, know more about what's, what's behind the scenes than just this flashy interface that I'm, that I'm getting. And that's where I think a lot of companies, especially startups, can make a difference because the large corporation will never, ever do it. It's not in their DNA, but as a small startup, you can make that a DNA to begin with. So I think that brings up a really good point. Do you guys have data in your platform by any chance? Oh, yeah. Of course. So I think one of the questions is, I mean, you've got big data, and it's all about data. You guys have data. As a startup and as you're starting on these journeys, it becomes very, I can measure a lot of things, but if I measure the wrong things, I'm not actually doing anything with it. So what would you guys say from your perspective are the one or two key metrics that as a startup I should be looking at to help inform what I'm actually doing in any one of these realms? Well, it depends very much what kind of business you're in, right? Uh, but if you go back to the, the data question, I think not all companies are data-driven from day number one, uh, where they make a lot of assumptions, gut feel, and that, that's fine because in the beginning you don't have that much uh, data to work on. But I've seen companies doing this wrong, I've been seeing companies doing this uh, the right way, we did it wrong the first time, it's about understanding from the day one what kind of data to start to collect. And you might have like 10 different things that you want to measure and track, but if you don't start to collect that day one, you can't decide in six months, 12 months, hey, these are the three data points that actually matter, and now I have the data available to make better decisions. Yeah, I would agree with that, and I would also say that at the end of the day, we're running businesses, right? Some businesses are pre-revenue. Some businesses are generating revenue. Um, I think the metrics really need to be rooted in what is ultimately going to determine a success for the business, right? So if you're a revenue-generating business, it should probably be something like a revenue-based metric. If you're pre-revenue, it should probably be something that will ultimately get monetized, right? Um, so I think it's important that, to your point, I think it's important that you set that from the beginning, but you also do it uh, in a way that's sort of authentic and aligned with your overall mission, right? But it, at the end of the day, these are businesses, and they, the metrics need to be rooted in success. Yeah, and I'd say generally, uh, especially when you start... Disagree with them, Ron. Disagree, disagree with them. them. Well, here's what I was going to say. is I, th I think that it's really important to kind of put it in n almost in non-technical terms, meaning like when we talk about it, we talk about how does engagement or, you know, how to, you know, especially these authentic connections that businesses are trying to make with their customers... How are, they, how are those going? Like, are they working? Are they, are, is the intended outcome happening? It's why we, we talk about what we do is like conversations because it's not about messaging or it's not about SMS or it's not about, you know, Apple business chat or whatever. It's, it's really about like, are you having rich, engaging, authentic um, conversations because that's where trust is built. Um, and then are those conversations, you know, r resulting in what you want, like the business metric of, you know, is that, are they becoming customers? Are they staying customers? Are they happy and all those kinds of things? So when you can put, I think if you're talking about data, it's critical to put it in like Norman hu normal human language terms because there are people in your organization that are going to be deep in the data and they've got, you know, Hadoop clusters or whatever that is. But, but it's, it's really fundamentally around are the, is the, is the, 
is it working in a way that you can describe um, around, you know, to, to normal people in terms of its, its value? Thomas. Yeah. We talk a little about transparency and uh, being honest with clients, right, or customers, etc. I think there's also a lot to do with being honest with the organization that you work in and be able to share all that information with your employees, with your team. And I think this is, this is maybe especially kind of for uh, founders in the beginning, you are a bit protective. You don't want to share all the bad news. You, you, you only want to share the graphs that go this way and not this way. Um, but at some point, we in Unicast, we said, hey, we're actually going to share everything with everyone. So we actually share our uh, management meeting notes with the entire company. So everyone has access to the decisions that are being made and the discussions around those, those specific topics. And if you start with that within the organization, I think that's when you also get employees to be transparent and authentic towards clients, towards partners. And that was a huge shift for us. But I'm, I'm very happy that we made that pretty strong uh, statement early. It takes a lot of bravery. You don't not want to sometimes know what those metrics look like. <laughs> um, why don't you guys just tell me a little bit, both of you represent platforms uh, about communicating with customers in various forms. Give me the gotchas that you've seen along the way uh, that are the sort of the warning signs that people should avoid uh, when they start using platforms like yours. I like no, to tell people, I mean, this is actually yeah. similar to what I said earlier about just talking and being, being authentic and we all know how to talk. Um, I, a similar piece of advice that I give to people using the platform on Anchor is just start, right? Like, I feel like when people go to start a podcast, there's so much thought and prep that goes into it. What am I going to talk about? Like, I got to line up my first 10 guests. And, you know, the, the approach that we take to building software and building a business is a very, very iterative process, right? It's like, you build a, a minimum viable product. I'm sure a lot of people know that term. You try to get it out to market as quickly as possible so you can learn, you can make mistakes, and you can fail, and you can test and react. And I think people should take the same approach to podcasting or creating on any platform, really. Put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to fail. Um, make some mistakes. Learn from your mistakes and, and get better over time. Ron? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest mistake we've seen is co um, companies, especially larger companies, they're so ingrained in their silos and the way they've been organized and their workflows that, that it's become like this, this thing and unto itself. I, I had this one conversation with uh, somebody who was merging two companies and they were focusing on the two different platforms. And I was saying, oh, you know, this is a really interesting opportunity because, you know, you've got this one great company and it's merging with another, you know, to really take this perspective of the customer as it relates to how the customer is going to interact with this combined entity. And the person who I was talking to is very senior, very experienced. Literally, the comment was, wow, that hadn't actually occurred to us. And I was like, and, and so it's kind of shocking when you get into this thing about, like, are people taking the perspective of the, the person? I mean, we talk about authenticity and trust and transparency. That's usually for someone, right? So flipping the perspective of who that person is and how does, how does that work is often a very hard exercise because you get wrapped up in organizational yeah. structures and budgets and, you know, systems and that's how, that sort of thing. But that's typically the thing that's always shocked me is how hard it is sometimes for people to flip the perspective and take the other, the other side uh, point, you know, point of view. Absolutely. So we've got to wrap up, but I'll leave you with this, which is be yourself, get started, measure what you do, be transparent, and care about your customer. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thank you. guys. Thank you.